Hey everybody, welcome to our live stream. I'm Mike Brightman, my company is Brightman Designs. Today, we're gonna to be putting together an architectural presentation board in an hour. I've started the clock, it is go time. I know you're at work, I value your time, so you give me an hour, I'm gonna save you hundreds of hours on your next project, all right? So we're gonna be using SketchUp and Layout and Lumion to pull everything together and create a 24 by 36 presentation board. So. What I'm gonna do is pull a model from the 3D warehouse, and we're going to use our conduct tools to shoot some elevations, some sections and plans, and then we're going to send it over into Lumion and create some renderings, and we're gonna be moving really fast. So definitely uh, hit me up in the comments, let me know if you like this format, what other subjects you want me to cover, what other topics and tips and tricks, and uh, let me know if I'm moving too fast for you. I'm gonna move through this process in an hour. I think it's super valuable to just see how, how it looks when you're working with a deadline in mind. So with that said, let's get to it. Okay, so over here in SketchUp, we're going to go to our window dropdown and check out the 3D warehouse. All right, so I got the idea for this uh, presentation. I want to kind of kick things off by, um, you know, starting with like a summer lake house. I was looking around on the 3D warehouse and I found this uh, featured collection from John Luttrop. And if I scroll down in here, I found this really cool model where it's called Minimum for Moderns. And so let's check it out and say, see more details. And then we can go ahead and download this in I don't wanna load this directly into my SketchUp model. I'm gonna save it to my desktop temp folder, all right? So we're just gonna save it there for just a moment and then we're going to uh, go back into SketchUp and I'll open it and I'll go to my desktop temp folder like that and there it is. All right, perfect. So now we are good to go there. Um, we're going to first take a look around this model. So uh, I just want to kind of get an idea for, uh, just want to get an idea for um, how this is set up and what the different layers are and all that. So here we go with our different tags. And if I just orbit around and take a look at this, you can see that um, first off, what kind of tags do we have? We have a roof, uh, we have furniture, and we have the cabin, all right? So uh, and the cabin is actually the active layer, so I can't turn it off. I'm gonna make untagged our active layer. All right, so there's our cabin. Perfect, all right, so pretty simple layering system is set up, and you know I wanna kind of whip this thing into, ch into shape, uh, get it set up so that I can create some drawings. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a look at my axes. If I right click on the axes and choose reset, take a look at where those axes actually land, all right? If I use my tape measure tool and just kind of strike a, a, a measurement over there, it's like over 1,600 feet away. And I can tell you that this can cause some problems if your model is located really far away from your model origin. So that's the very first thing I wanna get handled here is get this model back over closer to the origin, all right? So we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna hit uh, select all. I'm gonna turn my shadows off. I have a keyboard shortcut for that, con uh, control Q. And we're going to move this. I'm gonna hover on this point here and click once to start. And you know what? I'm just gonna let go of the mouse. And instead of actually moving this to the origin, I'm gonna hit the brackets and type zero comma zero comma zero. And then the brackets are closed, hit enter and it moves, if I do a zoom extents, it moved, uh, my, my move point went to the origin, all right? So that's how you can just kind of throw things at the origin without having to move it around and zoom in and, out, zoom in and out and find that. Now the other issue I have here is that the uh, model is kind of rotated off axis, which I don't really love. So I'm gonna again, go back in here and I'm gonna hit the rotate tool, tap the up arrow key, so I can constrain on the blue axis, uh, do a precise rotation. So I'm gonna hover along that door and then kind of scoot around and rotate it. So now my model aligns with my red axis, all right? If I zoom out again like there, and you can see now our model 
is set up on the axis, right at the origin. Nice thing too is that my where my model's placed, the origin is at my finished floor level. And so it just kind of makes everything easier when you're striking measurements, using our conduct tools to generate plans. Uh, this is kind of the first thing that I do when I'm getting my model set up, all right? One other thing I like to do is open up my Condoc system. And the cool thing here is if I load up Condoc Lite, all right? So Condoc Lite is, um, works with anyone's layers, all right? And that's what I'm gonna use today to automate these drawings. I'll click Design. And now immediately I'm in a good spot where I've got like a really light, lightweight style, turns all my shadows off, and we're kind of getting our 2D graphic, 3D object uh, scenario set up over here. So that, that's just kind of like a one click, get all your standards set up. And of course there's Condoc Pro, which is a, another subject for another day. All right, let's uh, get moving here and take a look at uh, how the grouping of this model is. So I just wanna kind of get familiar with it. So here's a bunch of trees and if I control H, hide the rest of my model, uh, I can just kind of see like how this uh, site is set up. And I think what I wanna do is explode this group. It's gonna make it easier for me to control what's visible in the drawings that I'm creating. All right, so we've got like our trees and our boulder and uh, we got all these trees back here. Uh, these guys look good. So you know what, I'm just gonna explode this group as well. And that way I have direct access to each one of these trees. I can uh, control the visibility of my boulder. And then maybe the last thing I'll look at is like this site. And you can just see that, ah, it's not too bad. Just a little heavy, we've got some water. Okay, so we're all good. I'm gonna hit uh, save and we're in good shape there. It's always a good idea to save, especially when you're doing these live presentations, right? So. Okay, we're, we're in good shape, we've got everything sorted, and let me explain what's next here. So, first things first, when we're creating a presentation board, uh, 24 by 36 presentation board, we're gonna need plans, sections, elevations, and perspectives. The first thing I wanna tackle here is going to be our sections and our elevations. And our Conduct Tools extension is perfect for that. So I'm gonna use the section tool and the elevation tool, and I'm gonna snapshot uh, on for the elevations on each side of the building and then I'm going to cut two different sections and then we're going to send those over to layout. Let's get to it. All right, so now let's go over here and access our Conduct Tools elevation tool. All I have to do is activate the tool and then click on the side of the house and I get these different options and I can go with, uh, there's all these interior elevations, uh, exterior elevations, my favorite is going to be a CAD exterior elevation with shadows. So I click the button and away we go. So check this out. We have our CAD exterior elevation with shadows. Now look what happened though. See all these different trees are in there. I really don't want all these trees to be set up like that. And so uh, in this view, so I'm gonna hide those for now. And we're gonna kind of zoom in on this guy. And then I'm just gonna right click on the scene tab and choose update. So all these scenes that are being created by Conduct, they're completely editable. You can work them uh, after the fact, or we can also work with it before we shoot our elevations. Let me show you how that works. I'll click design. And so uh, you can see we, we did miss one of these trees. Let me go back here and hide that. Update this, click on design. Okay, so now all of my trees are hidden right now. So now when I snapshot my next elevation like this, and go to CAD exterior elevation shadows. Now we get our front elevation and you can see that since I hid the trees beforehand, it's snapshotting the visibility of both the layers and the uh, hidden geometry, all right? So we can, uh, I like to zoom in on my, my elevations. It just makes it a little bit clearer as to what I'm doing and update them. Uh, it typically just runs like a quick zoom extent. So let me just work around here, knock out my other two uh, CAD exterior elevations with shadows and orbit over here, activate the tool, and we'll go with our CAD exterior elevation shadows. All right, so check it out. We're naming our scenes. Uh, here's elevation one, two, three, and I'll zoom in and update that one just like I did the others and zoom in and update there. Now, one other thing you might notice here 
is that our shadows are landing at a perfect 45 degree angle. It's not by accident. That's uh, another cool little feature of Kanak where it sets up all your elevations with these really clean 45 degree shadows. All right, so I'll just click design and the last thing, um, the last step of this part here, let's get some sections drawn, all right? So I'll go to my section tool, tap the right arrow key, and then I'm just gonna snap to that midpoint. And just like these other tools, we have all these different options for working with our sections, all right? Now typically what I do uh, on a project like this, since I didn't set up the layers and, and uh, you know we're not using like our full on system, I'm just kind of working off of somebody else's. I'm just gonna go with CAD section. All right, I'm, I don't, I'm not gonna go with the fill on this and um, we'll just go CAD section, but look at, there's a lot of other um, options here too, like these section perspectives. I think that'd be a really cool topic for a webinar as well. Uh, you know, let me know what you're thinking in the comments, uh, you know, either in the chat panel or in the comments. Let me know if there's something you want me to cover in a next, uh, next live stream here. So I'll go with CAD section like that and then I'll activate the section tool again and then let's just slice one right in front of that fireplace. Uh, let me try that one more time here. We'll go to section and right in front of the fireplace and do CAD section. Notice that our sections are coming out as AA and <clears throat> BB. So I'll just right click update. So now I've created all of my different elevations and all of my different sections as well. And um, you can see that it's got all of the styles already set up, uh, everything's ready to rock. The, the shadows are turned off over here and um, in my sections, whereas the shadows are turned on in my elevations, we're good to go. All right, so now what we need to do is send these drawings to layout. So the idea is that I don't need scenes, I need drawings, all right? So we've automated these scenes over here in SketchUp and now I'm gonna click the Condoc export and kick out these drawings and we're gonna run all of these guys. And I think if I remember right, uh, I'm trying to think of what's gonna fit on my page here. So all of our elevations, I'm gonna run those across the top of my presentation board. My sections are gonna be a little bit bigger right below. I'll leave my sections at quarter inch uh, these guys are gonna be at eighth inch like this, all right? So I set my scale up, I click uh, send to layout, requires I save the model, no problem. And now this is going to bundle up all of those scenes and compress them or build them into a scrapbook, dump it into layout so that I can start a new presentation and just drag and drop. And I gotta tell you that we've already thought through all these different line weights and everything that goes into it. So let me show you how that looks once we get over into layout. So over in layout, I'm gonna go to file new. I'm gonna go to my templates and we've got these 24 by 36 and all these different sizes that, that um, get installed with our Condoc tools. I'll click 24 by 36. Now I wanna do a presentation board. I really don't want a title block. So I'm just gonna kill those, but uh, it's kind of nice because I get to keep my layers and we'll just keep that title block locked. And then I'll go to File, Document, Setup, and under Paper, I'm gonna set this to be Portrait, like that. So it's pretty quick and easy just to kind of reorient your page. One thing to call out in here is that when you're working on, um, when you're working in, in layout, you want your display resolution to be low and you want your output resolution to be high, all right? So we're good there. Uh, got those settings all in place. And now we've already run our Condoc export. I can go over here and you find your, your Condoc drawings scrapbook. And in that scrapbook, I have all of my elevation drawings or those scenes that have been compiled into drawings. And I can just drag and drop all of them onto my page and just work through each one of these guys. And we're gonna run those, like I said, run those across the top. And then we're going to, um, set our, our uh, sections below. And remember the sections we exported at quarter inch, so those are gonna be a little bit bigger. I can drag those on there and go to the next one and drag those on. Perfect. So that's pretty slick, right? To get to that point, um, we're in good shape here. Let me just kind of organize my page just a touch. And um, you know, you, at this point, you, you just stretch the viewports around. 
Um, and I'm gonna right click and turn off this grid snap. I can't stand grid snap. All right, so let's just kind of get these scooted around and um, you know, I'm gonna be pretty, like kind of get pretty snug on each one of these elevations. If I hold Alt, I can kind of scale about the center. That's pretty handy. So we're gonna just like scoot these around and get them all set up as I want, get them all aligned. Uh, isn't that like the whole thing about a presentation board is like making these really clean alignments and um, just gonna kind of get them loosely in place and then we're gonna do some polishing, all right? So check this out. We're gonna do uh, use our grid, uh, our guides, all right? So part of, this, um, part of this template is that we have a layer called guides. All right, if I hop over into my Condoc annotations, activate the line tool, remember your scrapbooks can always be used as a palette. So the first page of our Condoc annotations is in fact a palette. So if I wanna draw a line that's a dashed uh, red line or I want it to be like a really thick uh, black line or gray, uh, you, know, you can choose you know, from all these different line weights and types that are already baked into this uh, this uh, scrapbook palette. It's easy to build on your own too. Hold shift, I can draw a line straight across and I'll just kind of throw this up there. And what I'm trying to do now is just get like my finished floor. Um, I suppose I'll, I'll align the actual like finished floor and just being a little bit loose with it. So I click on an elevation and then I get my uh, precise move grip and I can snap it to the finished floor and then move it and then snap it to my guide. So this is how you get everything all lined up real clean. And you know, once we get everything in place, we're not gonna wanna really mess with this all that much, but that's okay, we'll get it locked and, and all that once we sort this out. All right, so we're good there. I can turn off my guides for that one. Actually, you know what, let's do this. Let's just take this guide and, um, and let's see, our guide, we'll go like this, move it down. And I'll just get these guys sorted out at the same time, get them lined up to be kind of nice and perfectly lined up like that. There we go. All right, perfect. So, um, you know, to, for, today's, for today's live stream, this is like my first time with this setup. And uh, so I'm not really paying too close attention to the chat panel, but please uh, fire off questions over there. I'll make sure to get to uh, anything, any of the comments and chats. Um, I'll, I'll take a look at those and answer them the best I can. Let me know what I'm doing, you know? And if you dig it, uh, if you're liking what I'm showing you so far, uh, there's been a few tips and tricks in there. Give me a like if you don't mind, so. All right, so we've got all of our drawings lined up the way we want them. At least they're like, you know, the finished floor level is sorted. Uh, just a little bit more arranging on this. Uh, I kind of like the way that um, the ground plane goes up and then uh, the, kind of the flow of these elevations at the top. Um, I think that looks fine. Uh, and let me just think about this for a moment. You know, we've got, I don't know what the right or wrong answer is here. I mean, this is kind of technically the front door, although this is uh, one of the more interesting elevations in my opinion, same with this. So I, I think they're in a good order. I'm gonna right click and choose space horizontally. And I wanna be careful not to move anything up or down unless I'm moving them all together, all right? So that's about where I need to be. And I can turn off my guides. And I think we're in pretty good shape here. Maybe just uh, hold Alt and scale these viewports down a little bit and then shift nudge them up. Shift nudge nudges by a quarter of an inch. All right, so, all right. Doing all right so far. Uh, we've got our elevations, our sections all set up, but they don't look that great, right? We gotta dial these things up. This is a presentation board. We gotta put our best graphics forward, right? So personally, I like to have like a really thick ground plane uh, running on my, my elevations and my sections. And I definitely don't wanna see any of that junk below the ground plane cut. So stick with me, I'm about to show you a really cool trick on how I get rid of all that and add some clipping mass and clean up these drawings and layout really fast. Let's do it. Okay, so if I just start with uh, this drawing right here, okay, I'm gonna activate my line tool and I'm going to uh, 
just click on the ground plane there or that where it's sectioned. As I'm actively drawing a line, I can sample this really heavy line weight, all right? And so now I'm just gonna kind of draw over here and just kind of uh, roughly trace this. I mean, it's just the ground plane, so it doesn't have to be like super perfect, right? All right, so now we've got this, this line that we just drew and I'm gonna cut it. And I can tell you this, that whenever Condot creates those drawings, it's putting those viewports into a group. Uh, it's, and to get into a group, you can just hit the enter key or you can double click in. Now, once inside of here, I'm gonna hit control V to paste that heavy line into the drawing. Now I'm gonna reactivate my line tool and I'm gonna draw a line and finish off this shape so that you can like cover, basically I just wanna cover, like whatever your shape covers is what's going to be revealed, all right? Watch this, I'm gonna tap S and again, sample from my Condoc Annotations palette. I'm gonna adjust my fill so that you can see through. And the only reason I'm doing this is just to illustrate the idea of a clipping mask in layout. What you're covering is what you're going to see. All right, so now I'm gonna select both the shape and the viewport, right click and choose create clipping mask. Bam, all right, so that looks good, except for the fact that, that I don't have that heavy line. But remember, it's on my clipboard. I paste it again, tap escape, and we're good to go. So that's how I get my super clean sections and elevations and they're kind of all bundled up in this one drawing. So it's, um, you know, it's easy to move it around and adjust it after the fact. Let's keep going. I'm gonna explain it one more time, walking through it, and then I'm gonna do it as fast as I can and get this thing done. And how are we doing? We got 37 minutes here. We're, we're all good. All right, so once more, tap the L key for the line tool. I think this guy is just gonna be, um, we're, we're gonna draw our line, tap S, and I can sample that previous line. All right, so that's gonna be my ground plane. I'll just hit Control X, double click in, paste it, and uh, redraw, again, just to illustrate the point of a clipping mask, all right? Is that, let me see if I can sample this one, I forget, no. Uh, so let me just make this a fill without a stroke like that. Remember that what you're covering is what you're going to reveal with the clipping mask. All right, so I've just covered what I wanna see and now I can select both the viewport and the shape. And that shape can be any funky shape, you know? Right click and choose create clipping mask. Because I still have that line on my clipboard, I can hit control V and do that. So we're in good shape there. All right, and I can already tell, I think I might wanna rearrange these drawings, but let's get them all sorted and then we will make some final decisions. Now, moving fast, let's get, let's get this thing going. I'm gonna just draw my uh, heavy ground line here. And you know what, uh, this one's like on a one. I'm gonna tap S and sample that previous one. So now we're back to a three and we're just gonna kind of assume we're sectioning our water, cut it, double click in, paste, finish my shape like this, and then take both of those guys, create my clipping mask, paste it, and we're gonna do it again. I'm just gonna draw the ground plane in here this time. No need to even uh, you know, do that initial cut and paste. And so um, copy that one, control C, like this, and finish it off. Uh, I could even hit control A because I know that all that's in here is that shape that I drew for my clipping mask and my viewport. Control V, paste it in there, and we're good to go. All right, so now uh, I'm thinking that uh, there, there could be a better uh, composition, but that's uh, not too bad. I, I just kind of like the way that this was going up and down, but I, I wouldn't mind it if uh, potentially this drawing, I'm gonna hold shift while I move it, was over here, and maybe this one was here. Um, I don't know. It could go either way. I just kind of like the way that they, they go flowing up and down, maybe like this. Or, you know, like what is the, the true standard? Is it north, south, east, west? Um, and yeah, we'll just kind of do what looks good. I like this look better. So I'll scoot these over there, right click, space, horizontally, like that. And I think we're in good shape like that. So that's pretty decent. All right, 
let's button these up. Let's do these last two uh, with my line tool. Uh, I'm going to set this stroke to be a five and trace that, that cut again um, and again over the water. And you know what? Maybe that even needs to be like an eight. So on these drawings, uh, I think an eight would be better. And let me try that again. Not 38, but eight. All right, copy it, use my line tool and draw in there like that and create clipping mask, paste it in place and one more and we're gonna be good to go moving on to the next, all right? I'll tap S, sample that line. I'm telling you, if you are using the, um, if you're using the shape style panel more than like once an hour, you're doing it wrong. I'm telling you, everything you need is already, like once you start drawing, it's all there on your page. You just sample, use, use your scrapbooks as a palette, but also use your actual presentation as a palette, all right? So we're gonna take this, cut it, and paste it, finish off the shape. Um, yeah, these guys are just a little bit long. It's a good idea to get like the drawing totally sorted, uh, you know, cropped before you draw these uh, ground planes. But I, I think this looks fine. Uh, they're kind of spaced out on here and uh, we can nudge them up just a bit. And before we go any further, I'm gonna save this to my desktop te uh, temp folder and I'm gonna call this our lake cabin. Uh, that's fine, desktop temp. Looks good. All right, so up next, we've got the, the, the bones of it, you know, we've got our sections and elevations, but what we need now are renderings. And I gotta tell you, you know, we're, we're almost halfway through, we haven't touched Lumion, so let's get to it. So I'm gonna use Lumion's Live Sync extension inside of SketchUp. It's this one button, kicks my model over to Lumion, and we're gonna whip this thing into shape and uh, produce four different views. I'm gonna do one like hero image, like a big, uh, nice big rendering, uh, exterior shot. And I'm gonna try and get the trees to kind of dip in the middle because I wanna do this thing where I put like a site plan behind it. And then I'm gonna do two other uh, exterior views below and one interior, all right? So we're gonna use our live sync, kick it over to Lumion, whip this thing into shape. I'll bet you I can do this. I mean, this is unheard of, right? To, to create renderings in like, I'm guessing like 10 minutes. Let's see. Okay, so uh, we've saved our presentation. I've got SketchUp uh, still open here. I can split my screens for this portion uh, just while I'm doing our live sync, all right? Uh, I'm gonna create a new model and I'm going to use a forest environment, all right? So in our forest environment, we what's cool about this is you already have a bunch of trees and landscape that you know, kind of looks like uh, what you would expect from a lake cabin, right? That'd be pretty slick in the background. Now, over here inside of SketchUp, I have my Live Sync plugin ready to rock and roll. I'll just click go. And what this does is it bundles up my SketchUp model, sends it over to Lumion, and I can tell you that anything that has the material of like uh, glass, grass, water, that all comes through as uh, proper Lumion materials, but um, I don't think that our, our water in here is named that. So we're gonna get that dialed in. All right, so here's where it lands. Uh, you know, you can always check like where it's at, you know, maybe like zero, I, I'm kind of like zero, uh, I'll do like uh, 10 feet above. So just something like that, uh, if you wanna be precise or not. Uh, so there's our SketchUp model landed inside of Lumion. Uh, we have the live sync going, so I could make changes to the model. I can do, you know, whatever I need to do to get this thing whipped into shape. So typically with Lumion, it's good to work with glass, grass, and water first, and just kind of dial in a few of those materials. And then we're gonna take a look at creating some different, uh, you know, planting some trees. So let's do this. Let's expand our screen. Um, and let's go to our materials. And I mean, the first thing we need to get done here is get this water going. I mean, this static SketchUp water, if we go to various under water, we can go with like uh, calm tropical, clear uh, blue ocean, clear lake. You could do a murky lake. Eh? Uh, I think a clear lake is probably what I'm going for. That's what I'm wanting to, <laughs> if I was visiting this cabin, that's what I'd be going for. 
Um, so we got some, some pretty cool uh, animated water. Uh, we can go over here, maybe see if we can find like one of these uh, outdoor and stone and you know maybe there's like some sort of displacement stone uh, that we could use and you know you can like uh, this is new in Lumion 12 you can roll your scroll wheel to find these different pieces um, you know I don't even know uh, that that looks pretty good and then you know the other thing we want to do is like see this this material down here I don't like the way that looks we're gonna make that a landscape material so now it's all grass, but who's, uh, I don't know, it looks like a flooded golf course. No good, all right? I'm gonna click Save Changes. I'm gonna go over to my landscape, I'll go to my Paint tab, and we're going to choose uh, maybe like a sand, and I'm gonna dial up my brush speed like this, and you can paint the SketchUp model inside of Lumion, and you get like much, you know, kind of more organic, I don't know, is it organic uh, a look to the, um, you know, to the, the painting? Like in SketchUp, you have to like break it up by surfaces and there's tools to do that, but uh, it's much easier to just kind of paint the beach on. And then, you know, maybe I go with something like this guy here and choose, uh, yeah, like leaves, I don't know. And so as you get out here, you know, maybe that would be just a little bit darker. Although I don't think we're really gonna show that all that much. So, you know, that's kind of the look. All right, so now if you just get a, a flavor for that, maybe just a little bit more beach would be kind of cool uh, up here like that. All right, perfect. Now, what I need to do is get my trees visible again. All right, so again, with Live Sync, I can just uh, unhide my trees, pop back into Lumion, and I mean, those SketchUp trees, they don't look good, all right? They're, they're never gonna look good. You always wanna use your Lumion trees, the landscape library in Lumion is massive, all right? So I'm gonna try and find some trees. If I go over to my content library, go to place, uh, we're gonna go to our nature collection. And I mean, these guys are kind of like tall, I don't know, pine looking trees, you know, this agarwood. I'll hold L and just scale it down a bit. I'm not gonna go quite as big as these other ones. If I hold L, you know, I can kind of go with some different sizings here like that. So I don't want to work quite as large as what's actually shown in that SketchUp model, like that. And you know, maybe I type into our search panel, uh, maybe I'll go search for like an elm tree and see what we come up with there. So we've got, you know, uh, something like, uh, let's see, elm and this is probably fine. And if I hold L, uh, we can kind of scale that up a bit and place it right there. And I don't know, let's just find some different ones. We'll go like this and hold L, make that one a little bit bigger. I'll put that in the back and that guy looks pretty good. I'll hold L, resize it like that. Perfect. Okay, M is my keyboard shortcut for kind of my, what is that, the select tool. And let's hop back into SketchUp and go like this. We're gonna hide all of our trees like this and then expand out this Lumion uh, scene. <laughs> and now we're good. So we've, we've kind of uh, planted our trees in a way that was true to what was shown in SketchUp. And, uh, but now we're using these Lumion trees which are like animated, they blow in the breeze, they look much, much better. And check it out, this template actually has like birds flying around in it already. Um, this is great. I mean, Lumion is insane how fast you can pull these things together, all right? So uh, we're, we're good to go with all of uh, our materials. Uh, you know, one last thing, this material drives me nuts. Let me just um, go fix this in SketchUp. And so, um, you know, this is where like I need to, what is it called, like UV mapping? You know, like it's kind of not properly um, oops, let's not do that. Let's go to texture position, right click, rotate 90, hit enter, activate the paint bucket tool, sample that, hit shift, and see those three little squares? That paints everything with it, all right? Let me try again here. I'm gonna hit uh, paint everything. Let me undo that, hit uh, shift. Shift does like a material swap. All right, and again, this UV mapping or uh, it's, it's the material mapping is just kind of goofy. So let me see if I can like, yeah, sample one that looks right and then apply it to all. All right, so let's see what happened over here. 
I think we're good there. And then this guy, um, I'll just sample this one. And then when you're sampling the material, it's also grabbing like the mapping typically. Uh, let me try this, shift. Uh, I didn't really like that. Uh, there we go. All right, so, you know, close enough. Uh, if, if I was like, I don't know, if I was actually turning this in for uh, standing in front of a client or uh, in front of a jury at, in school, I would have spent a little more time, but I think that that's gonna be perfect for our purposes here today. All right, so all those are live syncing. We're getting all that, um, all those materials coming in as, uh, as I'm making those changes. So now what we need to do is set up some cameras. So I'll hop into my photo studio and over here, you know, you do have some like um, styles and scenes that are already set up. So you can go to like your um, real skies and just change the heading and probably be pretty satisfied with, you know, the results there. But personally, I like to just clear these guys out. All right. So I'm going to clear the effect list. Um, delete the camera and let's just get all of these guys. Uh, we'll clear all of these effects and delete these cameras. Four of them included like that. And then we're going to set up our own cameras, build our own effect stack and get this thing sorted. All right. So first things first, let's go pick some, uh, uh, some interior, uh, sorry, three exterior views and one interior view. All right. So let's, let's start with our, this is our hero shot, okay? And by hero shot, I just mean that like, I wanna place this one bigger um, on my board. So I'm gonna have like three images low and then I'm gonna place this one above and I wanna get like that sky cut out so that um, we can put like a cool site plan behind it, all right? So I'm going to uh, adjust my focal length. If I double click on the slider and back it up, I can hit 35, enter. 35 millimeters for my focal length is a nice setting for a uh, for an exterior. And I don't need like a ton of the water and you know, you can be real careful with your composition. And I click the camera to store that. So now, you know, no matter where I orbit, I can always get back there. Okay, let's work through adding some effects. All right, so if I click on the effects, and so, you know, effects is how you just build the visual style of what you're going for here. So of course, two point perspective, I always use that one. Uh, depth of field sometimes, real skies. Uh, I do like the real skies. I always choose cloudy four, it's kind of my favorite. And then just adjust your heading so that you know we're getting some like good shadows and sunshine and you know some shadows on the rock, that's pretty cool. You can always click in this uh, viewfinder to, uh, you know, to see uh, the uh, pr quick preview rendered result. Um, I'll click the effects button. We've got uh, real skies, shadows. All right, check this out. This is our uh, soft shadows for sure. Watch that. See, you get those soft shadows. And then fine detail shadows are gonna show up really well right there. You'll start to see those. And uh, if I turn them off, you know, you kind of see the difference. Uh, you just get a little bit more contrast in a lot of those uh, small little shadows, all right? Uh, also, this is exterior. Personally, I always dial my Omni shadows way up. I'll add another effect. Uh, reflections, all right? This um, speed ray reflections, uh, where would be a good example of that? Uh, possibly the water, definitely in the glass. See that some of these reflections here? If I turn that on, you're gonna get better reflections in your glass. I think it should affect our water too. If I turn it off, yeah. And unfortunately, uh, let's like if I look at the water, usually I would add some reflection planes to the water, but it's kind of like the the water isn't exactly um, the water's not perfectly flat. It wasn't built flat, and uh, I don't think I'm going to fix that right now. But certainly, you could also add, you know, if you wanted like perfect reflections on your glass, uh, nothing wrong with that. And uh, maybe I'll add one more over here. And then I'll, I'll do the plane margin. See how you start to catch more uh, when it's adjusting like how, uh, the, kind of the offset from the plane that I clicked on, like where is it gonna apply those reflections as well? All right, so that's cool there. I'll say okay. Hop back to my view, uh, get a preview and uh, looking pretty good. See those, now we're getting like those perfect uh, reflections in our glass. 
All right, so uh, I, you know, I always had skylights. Um, normal quality is probably fine. Um, not really messing with hyperlight. Uh, let's just work through a few others. I love outlines. All right, I always turn the transparency way down. Uh, the density, you know, you could adjust that as you see fit in this overdraw. But I think that's kind of a cool look. It's this um, photo reel, but a little bit of a sketch effect to it, like that. And uh, let's keep rocking here. Oh, uh, architectural, see, you know, the way these are organized, uh, yeah, I'm getting more used to it. It seems to change every view, uh, every year, but, uh, you know, some of these were in the featured, where we've already applied them, and uh, sky and weather, you know, normally I would use precipitation, but we don't really have any need for that right now. Um, lens flare, I find to be kind of handy just to, like, dial up the brightness if you want it. Uh, so maybe just a notch. Uh, I like that kind of bloom effect that it brings. And then, um, what else are we doing here? I think that's just about it. Nothing really in animation, uh, artistic enhancements. We could go with color correction. And of course, you could spend all day warming this thing up, cooling it down. You know, I guess it is kind of cool when it's a little bit, uh, or a little pretty awesome when it's warmer. Uh, kind of has that like vintage uh, summer photography uh, feel, hot summer day. Looks good to me. All right, so now we gotta pick a few more views, right? So we're gonna go with um, camera number two. I'm gonna scoot over here. So we need three exteriors. I'll do one kind of like this, uh, maybe a little more like focused on the building. And then I'm gonna get uh, up on this hill and check out like the front door. Um, you know, maybe something like this could be cool, although, uh, yeah, that looks all right to me. And we'll snapshot that. And then one last one, let's just go inside. And uh, I'm gonna look out over this lake. Now, you can see how it's kind of hard to catch much of this. I always dial these guys back down to like say, like a 20 is probably okay. And uh, let's set our eye height like that. All right, and even though this isn't like, you know, totally finished out over there, I think we're gonna be okay. So, uh, let's do this. All right, so I'll snapshot here. And um, now we're going to use each one of, uh, we're gonna take our effect stack from the first camera and we're going to apply it uh, to our other cameras, okay? So you can go up here to your effects. We can go to copy effect list, hop back onto this camera, click this menu and go to paste effect list. And really all I need to do is hit my um, my real skies and adjust the heading, right? And so now, you know, we just get some nice shadows over there. That looks pretty sweet, I dig it. And we'll go back here, still on my clipboard, paste effect list, uh, go to my real skies, adjust my heading again, you know, get some shadows laying on that guy there. Uh, click on there to get my preview, pretty cool. And then over here, we'll do um, the exact same thing. Just click those three little dots, paste the effect list. On this one though, I'm gonna say that like our, um, I'm gonna say our shadows, we could switch to interior. See, it kind of like brightens it up a bit. Uh, and then also my real skies, I can adjust my heading and maybe I can get like some sunlight coming in the, yeah, that's cool, lands right on there, on that chair. Looks good to me, all right? So now the last part of this is we need to render. And I can tell you that typically rendering would be a bear. But for this one, we're going to go to render and get these things out the door in like seconds, right? That's the beauty of Lumion. So we're gonna render um, our full photo set uh, to our uh, full photo set uh, desktop resolution. They're calling it 1920 by 1080 is perfect, and I also want my sky alpha map, all right? So I'll click render. This is gonna kick all four of those images out, and I just prefix by the date. We're gonna call this 220602, and I'll hit enter like that. And so now, away we go rendering, all right? So here's the deal. With, with any other rendering program, I'm telling you, we would be letting this thing cook overnight, and look at this, it's just like ripping through both the alpha maps and the full on rendering. And so, you know, the fact that we're like rendering at 1920 by 1080 is all good because we're gonna stack three of them across the bottom. I think those are gonna be fine for the resolution, 
But what you could also do is um, with, uh, let's see, I uh, lost, uh, lost that there. Uh, so what, what we can also do is uh, take these uh, alpha maps, uh, basically we're going to use the alpha maps to um, cut out the sky. Okay, so that's the next step. So uh, let's try this. We're going to take what we rendered in Lumion, both our, our uh, color, uh, color map or whatever we're calling those and our alpha maps. We're going to go into um, layout, we're going to drop all those in place, and then we're going to cut out the background of our hero image. All right, how are we doing on time? I got 14 minutes. Let's keep going. All right, so I'll click OK. We're good to go there. And let's go uh, take a look at what we created. All right, so here's like image one, and then we've got the map, and then we got image two, and three, and four. All right. Looks good to me. So now let's do this. You know, I'm gonna try, we're gonna try an experiment here, okay? We're gonna pull all three of these color maps in first, all right? So I'm gonna pull the images in first, get them all arranged, then we're gonna cut the sky and we're gonna update our reference, all right? And I might even try, uh, let's see, I, I'm gonna get tricky here. We're live, why not? All right, so here's our hero image. This one goes in the middle. Uh, this is kind of a secondary image and, and that one too, all right? So what I would do here is like, you know, scale these guys to kind of fit the board. And I just let my images, you know, kind of fall off the board. It's, it's all good. They'll get cropped. And, you know, you can kind of get a precise scale. But for this exercise, I think we're pretty good there. Uh, this guy, I'm going to scale it up like that. And I'm going to hit Arrange, Send to Back. And I probably don't need that much water showing. That looks pretty good like that. All right. Cool. Now, here's the deal though. I need to get rid of the sky. Basically what I want is like, I want to cut out this sky. All right. So let's hop into Photoshop, which I don't have open. So we'll open up Photoshop and then we're just going to drag and drop both of our, our kind of color image as well as, and it, landed on my other screen here. And um, so we're gonna hop over here to our temp folder and image number one is our hero image. And we're gonna take this guy and uh, we're gonna start with our alpha map. And I'm gonna hit control A, control X, control W to close it. All right, now over here, I'm gonna turn my background layer into a regular layer. I'm gonna hit the mask, hold alt, and now I'm editing the mask, hit control V to paste it, and then control I to invert it. And when I go back to that kind of base layer, look at that, it cuts out my sky. And now I can export a quick export as a PNG to my desktop temp. I'll click save, and then let's hop into layout. And here's the trick, I, I'm not sure how this is gonna go. I'm gonna save this because what I, I'm gonna try now is look at my document setup under references and I'm going to relink this reference. And if you ever are looking for your reference, like see how there's nothing highlighted here, but when I click here, it highlights it. So now I can hit relink and I wanna relink this to that PNG that I just created like that. Perfect, now my sky's cut out. So uh, not bad, right? That was pretty slick. That went pretty quick, not, not uh, no problems there. All right, we're getting close to the end here. Um, we've got 11 minutes, we got all the time in the world. Let's uh, talk about what we're gonna do next, all right? So, so far on our presentation board, we've got our elevations and our uh, sections, and then we've got these renderings down low. But, you know, I wanna get like a really nice floor plan to kind of fill the middle of my sheet. And, um, you know, well, that's important to have plans, right? I mean, plan section, elevation, and perspective. Let's uh, fill our presentation board with everything it takes to properly describe this building. So let's hop back into SketchUp, use our Conduct Plan Generator, kick out a, um, a floor plan. And I'm gonna show you some tricks on how to get some really cool topography lines in here. And uh, we'll see how it goes and um, a few other ideas, but we'll see how it goes. Let's get to it. Okay, so now um, 
back over here, we're gonna go to uh, SketchUp. And let's see, where's our SketchUp model? Got a lot of windows open now. And inside of SketchUp, I want to set up a uh, floor plan, okay? So remember that, uh, you know, I'm just gonna unhide everything first. And when we're working with um, floor plans, it's important that we have this idea of 2D graphics and 3D objects, all right? So I'm gonna go to our 3D warehouse first and let's set up some uh, 2D graphics for our, uh, let's see, we're gonna go to our components. I'm gonna type in uh, 2D tree plan. And I believe that the number one hit here is from my, my friend, the, the, the legend, Daniel Tall. Let's bring these 2D trees in, all right? And so I'm gonna put these over here and explode them. And next, uh, we're going to, um, then we're going to go to, um, let's see, go to, we're good there. So we need to like fill in some 2D graphics on these different trees, all right? So we're gonna go, um, uh, let's see, which ones do I like? Actually, I, I kind of like these three. These are good. So I'm gonna take these guys, invert my selection, and we're just gonna use these three trees. I'll scoot this one to that tree. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to double click into the tree, select everything, make it a group, and we're gonna call this our 3D object. And then if I hide the rest of my model, paste in place, this guy is going to be our 2D graphic. So that's kind of how plans, that is how plans work. It's, um, you know, you have, a 3D representation and you have uh, oftentimes a 2D representation. And because these are components, they're all kind of getting lit up uh, the same way. Perfect. Cut it. Uh, I'm gonna use my select tool, double click into this tree, select everything. Uh, looks like that can be our 3D object. Paste in place. We're gonna go to our 2D graphic like that. So all this is doing, it's like controlling through tags we have our 3D representation and we have our 2D representation. So we're, we're in pretty good shape so far. Uh, the last one we need to do is this guy over here and I'll take this, move it right in place, cut it, double click in, select all, make sure it's a group. Uh, this guy is going to be our 3D object, turns off because uh, the, the tag is turned off. This is going to be our 2D graphic representation. So that's how it's gonna look in plan, all right? And the only thing I'm concerned about is I just wanna make sure that these guys sit kinda low um, because when we cut our floor plan, we don't wanna really mess that up. Now, let me see what's going on with our site, all right? So we're gonna take these guys, we're gonna group them, and that way we can isolate it. And now I wanna like, you know, I wanna see like, can I take these guys and, um, intersect faces with selection, all right? And I wanna just see if I can like get this guy to intersect like that. And um, you know, I'm gonna undo that and I'm just gonna grab these pieces, cut it. Actually, I'm gonna undo all that, okay? And then paste it in place. That's what I'm going for. So I wanna get rid of it. Um, I don't wanna get rid of it. I just wanna like kind of separate these. This is gonna be a group and this is gonna be a group, all right? So it's kind of like everything underwater and then check this out, all right? So now we've got in here, I'm just gonna make this a group so I can isolate it. I'm gonna draw a big rectangle around it. I'm gonna make that rectangle into a group and then scoot it just below Start another move, tap control, tap the up arrow key to lock it on the blue axis. Let's go with 12 and let's do that uh, five times, maybe 10 times or uh, 15 times like that. Now I'm gonna select everything, control A. I'm gonna right click and choose intersect faces with selection. Now I'm going to delete these that I just made and what's left is all of my topography, all right? So now I can like select everything and, and, and remove this piece, cut it and back out a little bit. Now, where do I wanna put these, all right? So basically this stuff is, um, this is a 3D object, right? That's our 3D object. This stuff, if I, um, let's see, edit, paste in place, this stuff is gonna be a group 
and that's going to be our 2D graphic, all right? And then if I double click into our, let's turn off our 3D object, and inside of here, and let me try that again. I just wanna see like, did I get this line? I did not. Let me see if I can grab this edge here. I wanna grab like just this piece. And we're gonna go with like, I'm gonna unhide it and copy it. All right, so now inside of our 2D graphic, uh, I don't need this part that hits the canoe. I really don't need those either. All right, so what I'm getting at is like, this is gonna be a solid line and everything else, I'm gonna use this dashed lines plugin. And I think just normal dashes at like 12 inches and I'll say, okay. And look at that. So now you've got like these dashed lines, all right? So now what we can do is run our Condoc plan generator and we're going to use our plan generator. Remember, Condoc Lite is kind of generic, all right? So we're gonna go with like a CAD floor plan um, without a fill, and it's one level, we're all good there, and you know, you have a lot of options, but like, for what we're doing today, we just want this one CAD floor plan, all right? So I'll set up our project, and then we're going to go to, uh, added this CAD floor plan like that, and see how we're getting our 2D graphics our 3D objects, um, we've got kind of a site plan going on. Uh, looking pretty good, I mean, I've got my furniture turned on. You know, you could go back and like change your mind, you know, if you don't want the furniture, which probably makes sense to not have the furniture turned on. Uh, so let's just kind of reposition our zoom, update this. Um, I think that looks pretty good, you know? So I know we're getting real close on time here. I've got three minutes on the clock. I'm gonna hit uh, Condoc export. We're gonna kick our floor plan over there and we're gonna run this at the same, um, same scale as what we used for our sections. All right, so now back inside of layout, uh, I can go to our Condoc drawing scrapbook. Every time you run the Condoc export, it overwrites this Condoc drawing scrapbook. So now I can drop that on there and up, oh, this is a common gotcha, all right? Let me show you what happens there is my reference is not updated, all right? So I need to update my reference because that scene didn't exist previously. So when I drag it in, it's like not picking up on that. So we're just gonna update our reference and then drag and drop it again and we'll be good to go. All those guys get rendered. And so now there's our site plan. Let me expand this out and see, yeah, that looks cool, all right? So that's something like that. And you know what, maybe I would just flip this guy around. I think that would be kind of a cool presentation, like rotate it. And um, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is like the, you know, the entrance and it kind of has that feeling of, of like, you know, spilling out that way, all right? And so I kind of like how the trees are kind of, you know, uh, mixed up there together. And, um, you know, so that's, that's kind of the idea. Now the last step of this, is to hop back into our Condoc annotations and see if we can just like throw this thing together here real quick, hit that deadline of our one hour live stream and Condoc um, annotations. And so again, on the, the first page is a palette. The second page has like all these different, you know, drawing titles so I can throw like, you know, these guys here. Uh, maybe I'll just like make a copy of it and say three X, all right, and I'll take this guy make a copy of it over there. Uh, our floor plan, you know, you could throw like, uh, oh, we got some really cool like cameras. So you can say like, okay, we're, we're taking one shot here, one shot here, one shot here, and one here. It's pretty easy just to hop in and like rotate these and say, you know, we're actually kind of looking that way. And uh, so it makes it pretty, pretty quick and easy to annotate the, the heck out of this thing. Throw like a graphic scale on there with a drawing title. Uh, North Arrow is kind of slick. And, um, you know, it's easy enough as well just to throw like uh, a piece of text on here. Uh, we could even just say like our text is going to be something that size. And we'll say like 01 like that. And maybe make a copy down and like this. And then copy it across and say 2x and like that. Now, the last part of this is uh, we're going to, I'm gonna uh, 
go to file, choose export, uh, PDF, and uh, we're gonna go to our desktop temp, late cabin, save. I'll turn off my countdown. We made it in one hour. Uh, our JPEG compression is all good. Export this and uh, should open up for us. There we go. There is our architectural presentation board in one hour. Can we call that an hour? I started it right when we started the live stream. Sweet. I, I think it looks pretty good. All right. Uh, these are some pretty advanced tips and tricks. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a while. This is my thing. It's like, uh, it's, I keep it all in SketchUp and layout. I created the Conduct Tools extension to automate the process. And then Lumion comes along and, and just completely solves the rendering side of things. And with this workflow, uh, you know, I can create construction documents, permit sets, diagrams, uh, RFIs. I mean, it's just all so fast and so easy. And I gotta be honest, it's like, it's pretty inexpensive. I mean, you know, um, it's, uh, let me see, I lost you again. Uh, so it's a just a really streamlined workflow and uh, definitely worth checking out. Take a look at condoctools.com. You can grab a trial uh, there or uh, also, you know, SketchUp, they've got their free trials and same thing with lumion.com as well. All right, so uh, that's fun. I love doing this. I'm so thrilled to be back to presenting live. Um, this is what I, I really dig on, just moving fast, showing you how to get things done quick. Let me know though, hit me with some comments. Uh, head over to brightmandesigns.com. Uh, you can sign up for our email newsletter. <laughs> We're beeping again here, stand by. And uh, you know, sign up for our newsletter. Uh, that way you can get our tips and tricks and our events delivered directly to your inbox and certainly subscribe to us and like the video on YouTube. Very much appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, I'm gonna schedule one probably in the, it's gonna be two to four weeks. So I'll see you then. Thanks for coming.